going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be taking a look at how you can add a header and a footer to your collection view so we've got these four cells here we've got a header up here a footer and we've also gone ahead and added two more collection view sections and the reason we did this is to illustrate that each section can have a header and a footer so that said uh, I've actually been super busy this week and I didn't get a chance to upload videos yesterday and the day prior. So tomorrow, which is Saturday, I'll be uploading additional videos. So stay tuned for those. Make sure you smash that like button down below. Let's absolutely destroy it. Uh, it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So the more people that watch the video, the more I can go and create more videos. Um, so if you want to see more videos, hit that like button. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let me stop talking and let's get into it. All right, so let's get started by creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application, call this header and footer, stick it on our desktop, and let's jump right in. So the first thing we want to do is set up a collection view to which we can add headers and footers. So I'm going to set up a collection view really fast. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly because that's not really the purpose of this video, but feel free to follow along. Or I've got a separate video talking exclusively about collection views and what they are and how to set them up. So take a look at that. So we're going to set up a collection view. Let's throw a layout in here. We want to actually create this layout. It'll be a collection view flow layout. Whoops, we want a flow layout, this one. We're going to set the scroll direction to be vertical. We'll set the section insets to be UI edge insets, and it's going to be zero all around. So zero, zero, and zero. And let's see, we also want to set each of the cell size. So we're going to say item size. Um, it'll take a CG width and a, or a CG size with a width and height. Clearly cannot type today. So this will be the width of the screen divided by 2.2. .2. And let's do that. Let's also set the delegate and data source. Let's not forget to add it as a sub view. Let's override view data layout sub views. And let's give this a proper frame will be view.bounds. Um, let's also give this a background color of white. Uh, you'll have errors for this delegate data source right now and the reason is because we have not added the conformance up here. So let's come up here and say uh, UI collection view delegate. For some reason it really wants to add that one. Uh, UI collection view delegate and UI collection view data source. And actually, ironic, we do need that other one too. UI collection view delegate flow layout. And these errors should go away now, but we'll get more errors up here because we need to implement two required functions for the data source. So we can click the error and then hit fix. And we'll see that they get automatically stubbed up up here or stubbed out up here. So I like to move them to the bottom. Uh, for number of items, we'll return four. And we want to return a cell for this collection view. So we need to create a cell before we can return it. So let's click this and new file. We want to create a subclass of a collection view cell. And check the box to create an XIB. Hit enter twice. Now we want to add um, a static identifier as well as a static function and this function will return a UI nib and the reason we add this is because it just makes our life easier in terms of registering the cell to the collection view as you'll see in 10 seconds and we'll just give this cell a background color uh, let's say blue, which is link, 
And what else? We also need to take the cell ID we put here, go to the XIB, open up the right panel, and you can actually do that by holding Command Option 0. Um, and let's paste in that identifier there. Back to the view controller. Whoops. Back to the view controller. And now we can uh, register the cell up here and use it down here. So to register the cell, we're going to take this, register, and we called it my collection view. We're going to register the nib with the given identifier. And down here, we can say the cell is collection view, DQ a reusable cell with this identifier for index path, and we'll say return cell. So, okay, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, went through that little quickly. Let's hit Command R and we should see a collection view with four blue cells. Maybe not, there we are, okay, beautiful. So now let's talk about the more interesting thing, headers and footers. So if you're familiar with table views, or even if you're not, table views have headers and footers implemented in a way where each section can have a header or footer, and the table itself has a table header and a table footer. The reason this is important is because this is different from how collection views are implemented. In a collection view, there is no collection header and collection footer there's only section headers and section footers. And the way we implement those is slightly different. Actually, it's completely different. So let's actually implement a header and a footer so you guys can see what goes into it. So what we first need to start by doing is creating a new file. And these headers and footers are actually subclasses of a UI collection view reusable UI collection reusable view. So similar to how we create a reusable cell and DQ it, the header and footer needs to be created in this fashion as well. So let's call this one header. And we're not going to create an XIB for this. We'll just leave it as is unchecked. Hit enter twice. And similar to the cell, we're going to come in here and give it an identifier because we need to regis register this to the collection view and we're simply going to have one public function in here um, called configure and we're going to call this and all we're going to do is say um, background color is let's say system green so uh, in a real world scenario, what you could in fact have in here is let's say you want to put a label in the header. Let's actually add a label. I won't be that lazy today. So let's say private, let's create a label. Basically, we would want to create all of our header views in here and add them as sub views. So we're going to say label.text is header. Let's also center this. Um, we want to say text alignment. Let's return the label like so. And let's also make the color of this uh, white because our background is green. And in this configure, we're going to say add subview for label. And now we want to override layout subviews, call super, and we're going to say the labels frame is bounds, which is the entirety of this view. So we have now a real world example if we wanted to show a label in a header. But how do we get this header to actually show up now? So let's go back to the view controller. And similar to how we register the cell here, we want to register this. Uh, header. We are going to say collection view register and we want to register the header view that we created so header um, view dot self whoops dot self and now we need to provide the kind of view we're registering so in this case it's a header so that'll be the section header kind 
And we want to, of course, provide the identifier, which is also a property we added here. Now we can dequeue the header as well as provide a size for the header. So let's dequeue it in the function that's called view for supplementary view. And basically in here, we can dequeue a header view similar to the cell. So we can say let header is our collection view, DQ, supplementary view. And the first thing we want to say in here is of kind. And we'll simply say uh, UI collection view dot section header. The uh, identifier is our class's identifier. And lastly, we provide the index path. So most importantly, we want to cast this with a as exclamation point, our class. And the reason we want to do that is because now we can call header dot configure and return the header. If we didn't provide this as cast, you'll see we'll get an error for this configure because it's not aware of where this function is coming from. So we need to cast it. And before we can actually run it and see the header, uh, it's probably a good idea to give the header a size. So there is a function called reference size for header. And we'll simply return a CG size with a width and a height. Hit command R to build and run. And we should see an awesome looking header up here. So awesome. Cool. Making progress. So let's add a footer before we wrap up. So to add a footer, actually, it's really simple and similar to the header. So we're going to be super lazy and copy and paste a bunch of things. So let's copy and paste this header stuff we created. And all we need to actually do is just rename a few things. So let's call this footer, footer, footer. Let's make this uh, system red. And let's go register this to our collection view. So let's actually just copy and paste it so you guys can see how similar these are. So let's paste that there. Change the name of everything to footer. Now, notice we're not replacing the header. We're going to keep both the header and the footer, uh, of course. Make sure you change the kind to footer. And let's see, we want to dequeue this now. So in this function, we're returning the header. So where do we return the footer? So if you notice, there's a parameter in here called kind. So up here, we can simply say, uh, if the kind is UI collection view dot section footer, we can basically return a footer. And I'm going to be lazy again and copy and paste all of this. Whoops. Make sure you change the cast and the identifier. And let's see, the kind should also be a footer. Let's rename this variable to be footer because this is just going to get super annoying because they're both headers in the code, but not actually. And lastly, we want to give a reference size for the footer. So let's copy and paste the return statement. Uh, the two functions are very similarly named, so just be careful of uh, which one the autocomplete brings in because Xcode autocomplete oftentimes really sucks. And before we run, if you notice, these cells are flush against the header and there's no room between anything. So let's come up here to view to load and change the insets for the layout. And I'm going to update this to be uh, five. Any number works that's slightly higher than zero and things will just be a little more padded. So now we can hit run, command R to run. And now you can see we got this awesome looking uh, header up here. We got our four cells and we've got our footer. So um, we actually didn't explicitly say how many sections we have, because if you only have, rather if you haven't implemented that function, the assumption the system makes is you only have one section. But in theory, if we implement number of sections, let's say return three and hit command R, you'll see that each of these sections will now have a header, the four cells and the footer. So of course, in a real world example, you would supply your data and maybe each of the headers and footers would be different or 
maybe one section would have it and the other wouldn't. And the way you can actually check which section you're dequeuing for in this function is by simply checking the index path dot section. And that way you can basically check what section you're getting a header or footer view for and if you want to return something. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how you can add a header and footer quick overview. So if you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, make sure you smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new. Head on over to iosacademy.io to get on the waitlist for some awesome other content that I've got in the works. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.